So uh, I'm honored to be here uh, amongst uh, everyone and amongst our responders and survivors and um, my, my fellow um, providers. Um, um, the modest title of my modestly titled talk is um, What It All Means. <clears throat> no problem. Seven minutes. I got it. I got it covered. Um, <clears throat> But I think you've had hints about what it all means already, right? And the first hint, uh, if you can think back that far, is what Dr. Denise Harrison said. Now, where's Denise? Where did she? She's way in the back, OK? If you have trouble remembering what she said, just turn around and look at her. It's OK. It'll come back, because she was fantastic. She's so eloquent. Um, but starting with that, uh, we, we've had a, a group of people really tell us a great deal about world trade. So let's. Let's start talking about what we actually heard. Well, this is a, uh, a program about a disaster response program uh, as a categorization. And usually disaster response, you want to you talk about the exposure, obviously. Um, you want to talk about acute and chronic. You want to talk about the, the populations, uh, populations exposed. Uh, you want, particularly want to deal with the vulnerable populations um, to that exposure. You wanna, certainly want to talk about diseases. Uh, with an emphasis on mental health in disasters. Um, and um, you want to also cover a myriad of other topics uh, that will kind of fall out of trying to deal with those three. So today we had um, wonderful talks about exposure with Dr. Lucchini talking about the risk of cancer. Um, uh, Leo Trisande, who I think is just a marvel um, kind of leading that charge about a really forgotten part of our population, the children, who are extremely vulnerable to this type of exposure, uh, and his, his beautiful work, painstaking, detailed, beautiful work uh, to show the risks that the kids are having uh, to just one of the chemicals that goes down there. So, Leo, my hat is always off to you. Uh, it just continue the great work, just, just fabulous. And then our, our, our Dr. Weber, who works so hard, um, uh, with the fire department uh, doing a beautiful study. Um, you know, you, you realize that studies are kind of like baseball pitches, you know, they're, they, you th some are fastballs and some are sliders, some go right in the dirt. Um, this is a beautiful curveball that Mayris is throwing, just a beautiful, gorgeous curveball that's gonna drop in the strike zone about 15 years from now when the results come through and show that the difference between these two uh, populations of firefighters in terms of outcome is the World Trade Center exposure. It's beautifully designed, it's well thought out. Thank you so much, uh, Mayors. Um, we've had our doctors talking about illness, uh, Dr. Reibman, um, my colleague, Dr. Laura Crowley, um, uh, Dr. Clauston and Dr. Brackbill, really describing the population, both uh, in, in the CCEs and in the registry, uh, and talking about the illnesses. Um, we've had um, uh, people who have been doing uh, population, um, I mean, hypothesis generating uh, studies, like uh, I think Dave Prezant's study about rheumatoid uh, disease and autoimmune diseases to generate new thinking about the illnesses that may be coming. Uh, and Dr. Reibman, of course, about the, the airway disease. Um, Dr. Markowitz talked about how we think about new conditions. And uh, both Dr. Federer and Dr. Ferry, just with us now, talked about really exciting new approaches to a terrible illness, PTSD, uh, where people can actually start doing this and hopefully get relief of symptoms. I think this is fantastic work, and I'm, I'm very, very excited about, about uh, participating uh, with both of you in the studies. Um, so uh, we... we um, we heard a lot of great stuff, right? So, is that what it all means? Uh, you kind of stop there and you say, maybe, maybe there's a little something more. So what I think it all means becomes clearer if you turn the title of today's program on its head. Uh, as Somebody once said to me, if you really want to see the world, stand on your head. So it comes, research to care turns into care to research. So 
David is looking at me, I said that already. <laughs> and I'm just going to say it again, but it's not just the care, the medical care. What it is, I think, what it all means is the inspiration that responders and survivors gave to all of us their courage, their unselfishness, their willingness to sacrifice themselves and share with the community, and to be the people who still say to me day after day, oh, doc, I know you got treatments, but really, save it for the guy who really needs it. Save it for the person who really needs it, doc. That, that doesn't happen in a lot of places. It's the unselfishness of you, our populations. And quite frankly, that has inspired us. It has inspired us repeatedly. It has inspired us every single day. It has inspired us this morning. Your care that inspires our research, which then helps our treatment. So what it all means, it means inspiration. Um, and I'm hoping, I'm hoping, that it's the type of inspiration uh, that can carry us forward, even when we have those moments that David and my, my dear colleague Jackie uh, so eloquently described um, of loss. And I hope which will carry us past uh, the sight of all these broken hearts. So thanks very much. Thanks for this honor. Thanks for being you.